Hello friends, this is Christopher Davis Shannon, and over the next few weeks we're going to explore the wonderful world of Clawhammer ukulele. Let's get started. If you're not familiar with claw hammer playing, it's a style of five string banjo playing that we're able to adapt to uke thanks to high G tuning. Now you can still play this in low G, but you're not going to get the correct sound. When we think about five string banjo, there's really four fretted strings and then the fifth string is a drone string. You don't play anything but the open string on there. So likewise, as we're playing claw hammer uke, the high G string is now going to be just a drone. We're not gonna fret anything on there at all. So let's look at the right hand technique. So let's look at the right hand position for claw hammer. Now I want you to take everything that you know about playing the instrument and set it aside for a moment. This is completely different. And if you try to integrate things that you already know into this style, you're going to end up having a lot more trouble than starting from scratch. So the first thing is we need our claw. So I want you to take your hand, whichever you use to strike the strings, and just shake it out down by your side. And as you bring it up, you have a nice relaxed fist. This is our relaxed hand position, and this is really our claw. This is what we're going to be attacking the strings with. Now, everyone's hand's going to look a little bit different. Yours won't look exactly like mine. But the key is to keep this nice and relaxed the whole time. As with everything in music, we don't want to just impart undue stress on our bodies. So if we pick up our ukes now, our motion here is going to be quite a bit different. We're not strumming, we're not plucking the notes we are just kind of knocking the notes out. So I want you to do for the moment is take that relaxed hand position, mute your strings, and we're gonna take our thumb and place it on the G string, and we're gonna just get used to what the wrist motion is that we need to do here. So what we have to do is not strum down, not like this, we're gonna knock, like you're knocking on a door into the instrument. We're not gonna worry about hitting a string or anything like that now, we're just worried about the basic motion. So for the moment, we're gonna leave this thumb right here, Use it as a fulcrum. And this is our hand position. Nice and relaxed. Just knocking on the instrument. Now this is kind of our baseline, but our thumb is going to move. So you can see as I do this same motion, the thumb's just coming up a little bit, but always returning to that G string because that's going to be our finger to hit the G string with. Which we're not gonna worry about for the moment. So you wanna practice this a little bit. Just this basic motion of always returning to the G and always hitting down into the uke, not strumming. Once you feel comfortable doing that, let's look at how to isolate individual notes and play melodies. Once you get comfortable with the basic motion, then we can start isolating individual melody notes. And this to me, and I think to a lot of students that I've taught, is the hardest part of playing this style. So if you can get through this first lesson, the rest of it's actually quite a bit easier, but playing melodies can be tough. Because what we're doing here is we're not plucking. We're hitting the string with the back of our finger now. Now, I'm using the back of my Point your finger, you can also use your middle finger. Either is perfectly acceptable in the style. As a uke player, I tend to find that the index finger is the easiest. Now remember that our motion's not changing. We're just now isolating one note. So let's put down a C major chord. And we're gonna do the same motion we were going to do before, but now we're gonna modify it so the back of our fingernail hits the A string. So we hear this. Just join on in with me. Now notice that the whole hand is coming down in the same way. I'm not strumming, I'm not plucking. We're just hitting the string with the back of the nail. And that thumb is always, always, always coming to rest on the G. Let's go down to the E string. And this should be much harder. But note that the motion doesn't change. We just need to keep it small so that you're not hitting the next string. Down to the C. Back to the E. And back to the A string. Now 
Good, and practicing open strings along with that exercise that I just gave you before is very important to starting off in the style because this is really our foundation for the movements that our hand and wrist need to make. Now let's put some fretted notes onto this. For our first exercise, what we're going to do is play a C major scale, but in claw hammer style. So we're going to start down on the open C string and walk it up so it'll sound like this. Now notice that my hand is doing the same exact thing every time. Nothing is changing down here. This needs to become like riding a bike. Let's try that C major scale nice and slowly together. One, two, three, four. Now, over the next few weeks, we're going to build up to play an entire arrangement of a song. And that song is the old nursery rhyme, but also Ella Fitzgerald hit A Tisket, A Tasket, which you are likely familiar with, at least the melody, if not the lyrics. So this week, all we're going to do is address the melody itself. No chords, no extra rhythms, nice and basic. So we're starting out on a G, and even though we're on high G, remember that this G is not available to us, except for one very specific purpose. So if we're playing a G in the melody, it needs to be a fretted note on the third fret of our E string. So our melody sounds like this. I'm just going to play it for you and then we'll give it a shot together. So it sounds like this. Repeat. Let's try that together now. One, two, three. Even if this seems easy at first, spend some time this week working on this because we're going to add in both the chords and the rhythm next week. And this right hand position needs to be very consistent for that to be able to happen fluidly. If you'd like a PDF to download of these exercises that I've been talking about, as well as some additional exercises, you can join me over on Patreon or through my website at the Tim Mann's Ukulele Club. I'll see you all next week.